Hi folks, I'm back for another review. You know, <clears throat> a couple of nights ago I reviewed the movie Psycho 2 with Anthony Perkins and a cast of other actors, which I gave a 9, as you all know. And I, th I told you I was going to basically come back and review number 3, Psycho 3 and Psycho 4. But I'm going to skip Psycho 3 tonight because I want to get to 4, because I think this is a very interesting movie. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, as you can see, we got a new addition. To the, uh, I don't know. Penny got this goofy new clown hangy thing. You know, it's, it, the li eyes light up and stuff like that, and it's kind of weird looking. I'm sure he'll demonstrate it the next time he does a uh, uh, webcast. Okay, let's get. And you know, it's quiet. I like it quiet. So because I want to get my point across. <laughs> okay, we're gonna talk about uh, Cycle Four. It's called uh, the beginning. It's the third movie in this triple feature, Cycle 2, Cycle 3, and Cycle 4. Now, basically, this one starts off... I don't know how Anthony Perkins got out of the asylum after he was convicted in Cycle 3, murder, murdering people again, but he, he's out and he's, he's actually happily married. He's married to a psychiatrist, the, one of the ladies that worked at the asylum. So I don't know how he got out after being convicted two times. In, I mean, it's, it's just weird. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway... Uh, it's basically about a talk show, and uh, so he just happens to be on the radio that night, you know, listening to the radio, Anthony Perkins in his kitchen. His wife is at work, of course, and uh, so, uh, I should say Norman Bates, and so there's this radio show talking about why children kill their mothers, particularly young boys kill their mothers. And CCH Pounder is the radio talk radio host, and she's got a, uh, a wacko psychiatrist in the studio with her, along with uh, a couple other people, you know, the camera people and that, stuff like that. You know, I think John Landis actually is in this movie. I think that's John Landis. I'm not sure. He, he, he's the owner of the radio station. Uh, so basically, they're talking to people. It's a call-in show, you know, one of those type of call-in shows. And so... They're talking to different viewers about, you know, what their views are on why uh, children end up to be murderers and, you know, and go crazy in their youth, you know, when they're in their childhood, stuff like that. So, you know, and Anthony Perkins, and particularly killing their parents, you know, and, uh, and being put away, stuff like that. You know, it's kind of a sad subject, but, you know, it's this movie is based on this. So, so anyway, he hears the radio show and he calls in. And so he basically starts to recant why he turned into the person he is today and uh and anyway it goes it has flashbacks to his childhood and he's played by uh oh god what's this guy's name oh my god the, the kid from et uh, i can't think henry thomas i think he was from et i'm pretty sure henry thomas remember the little kid in et i think it's him don't quote me on that and then olivia hussey plays his mother oh she is this unbearable unrelenting she is like a bipolar schizoid you know one moment she's happy the next moment she's you know all over the place you know and she's you know she's going from one relationship to another and he's completely screwed up and you know he doesn't you know he's incredibly shy of girls you know and of course his mother isn't helping him any you know because she's completely she thinks everybody's dirty he shouldn't be involved with nobody you know and so that's why he's so screwed up you know he's she's like a, a overbearing domineering mother you know that just will not let him out of his sight except maybe to go to school or to the grocery store or something like that and uh, it's there's a lot of weird scenes now Henry Thomas actually plays him like I said and he does actually a pretty good job he's quiet you know he's very shy he wants to get involved with girls you know because he's a teenager you know he's coming of age you know basically so he's he's interested in finding a girlfriend and stuff like of course his mother will not allow that you know because she just like I said she thinks see yeah, everybody's dirty you know and she is just a complete wacko Olivia Hussey plays her she actually does a pretty good job and uh, so, you know, the movie just goes back and forth. You know, it shows what he went through as a, uh, a young boy and a teenager growing up with his mother. And then Anthony Perkins, Acne, actually Acne Perkins in the radio station is talking to CCH Pounder, the radio host, the lady. And he's telling 
his story, and then they're doing flashbacks with these other actors portraying him and his mother, which is a very interesting movie. I think it's a very kind of a good idea for a movie. Now, I never saw this movie before. Never saw this movie before. But I just happened to stumble upon this a couple years ago. I noticed there was number four. I always thought there was only one, two, and three. And I, there's actually four cycle movies. Now, there's some, there's some rumors that Anthony Perkins did not, he kind of like, stayed away from this movie. He thought it wasn't really a well-done movie, but I think it's actually a pretty darn good movie. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, he's he's trying to tell this all these radio hosts what, what happens and why he became what he did, you know. It has, has flashbacks to when he was a young man and stuff like that, when he was killing people and stuff like that. And, you know, and it's really a kind of a creepy and eerie movie, you know. I, I, think, I think this movie is very underrated. You know, a lot of people don't like this as much as 1, 2, and 3, but I think this movie kind of, it fares well against those movies. I think it does. And I think this is a great idea how, we, it's called the beginning because uh, that's that's basically what happened. It's the beginning. That's how everything started with uh, Norman Bates and his mother. Uh, you know, so he, you got to feel kind of bad for Anthony Perkins. I mean, Norman Bates, you know, he really was screwed up as a kid, you know. His mother was just a maniacal Excuse the, excuse the language, a witch. <laughs> and she was completely whacked out of her own mind, you know. And she was, like I said, I mean, there's some... It's, you know, it's, it's, here's, here's, I don't know if you can see this very well. It's right at the bottom here. It, it has the same house and stuff like that. And, you know, and, and you know, she's, she's trying to run the motel. And then she, I don't know if she has a day job. But I don't think she does. She's mother and stuff like that. So she's, you know, he's... He's trying to cope with everything. Uh, Norman Bates is a young man, and but I, I I do like this movie because he's keep Norman or Anthony Perkins keeps wanting to hang up because he keeps spilling more stuff about wanting to still kill people. And of course, C C H Pounder, the radio host, is trying to keep him on the line along with the psychiatrist and the other people in the studio because they finally they don't really actually know that this is actually Norman Bates until about maybe twenty minutes into the interview when he's you know, talking on the phone to her in the studio, and they finally figure out that it's Norman Bates, and they all get so wound up in it, they, they kind of go, oh my God, this is the real Norman Bates. This is kind of like what our radio talk uh, show is about tonight, about why people, why young people kill people kill their parents and so they want him to stay on the line you know because you know he is uh, like a, the number one authority <laughs> you know he i mean he's world famous you know movies and you know he, yeah well whatever not movies but you know what i mean he world famous for what he'd done to his mother and all the people at the motel the bates motel and stuff like that so and he he and they keep asking him, "Are you feeling like killing again?" And he kind of, and he kind of hints that he want he wants to kill his new wife. And they just kind of like, "Oh, you know." He keeps hanging up, and they call him back and talking to him, and you know, and they're trying to convince him to, you know, keep focused, you know, stuff like that. And uh, and then they're doing flashbacks, and he keeps talking about his childhood, and they're doing flashbacks to his his youth and everything, and it shows all kinds of different stuff, and you know, you know, his mother's, you know. She smears lipstick all over his face and, you know, locks him in a closet and stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, there's so many horrific scenes of what she did to him as a youth. It was unbelievable, man. No wonder he was so goddamn screwed up, you know? Yeah, I mean, he, he was, you know, he well, he really came from bad genes. There's no doubt about that. Really bad DNA there, man, for him. You kind of kind of feel sorry for Norman Bates. And, you know, he ends up basically killing his mother. It shows actually how he kills his mother and her new boyfriend. Her new boyfriend's a sleazeball. She hires him uh, to come and manage and work with her up at the motel. And, of course, he moves in. He's just a complete creep. I don't know. I can't remember the actor who plays this guy, but, you know, he's just he he's just a bully. He's always pushing poor Norman and stuff like that. He's always, you know, tormenting Norman along with her and stuff like that as Norman's growing up. And finally, you know, Norman just kills them both. He, he basically, he's always making tea and stuff for both of them because they're just a bunch of losers, both of them. So, you know, he pours strychnine, basically, in Henry Thomas into the their iced tea stuff like that you know gobs of it you know and they fills their glasses and of course they both drink it you know and they're they're choking to death and they're you know and they're screaming at him trying to kill him because they they realize they're going to be dead probably within 
15, 20 minutes or a half hour or whatever, and they're they're spitting up all kinds of crap. You know, they're poisoned basically. You know, it's a, it's a lethal poisoning. You know, so <laughs> you know they're 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 following around the house trying to kill him. You know, and he's fighting for his life to get away from them, and they're they're gagging and spitting up all over the place and screaming, and it's kind of really a terrible scene, man. Until they both finally end up dying, you know, and of course that's where he, you know, I don't know what he does with the guy's body, but of course he does with his mother. You know, he that's actually not his mother. That's his actually his stepmother, I believe. You know, he turns her into uh, to mummy and, you know, mummifies her, taxidermy and stuff like that. Puts her up in the bedroom, of course. That's where, basically where, you know, the first movie kicks in, you know, cycle. So, uh, anyway, I, I do like this movie a lot. I don't know how long I can talk about this review because there's not a lot to talk about. It has interesting dialogue. It has a lot of great flashbacks to when he was a kid. But really, I think Anthony Perkins did a great job in this movie as the call-in viewer. They finally figure out it's Norman Bates. And he does a really good... You can see just by his facial expressions that he's starting to get twisted again. You know, because they're bringing up all these images to him and he's recanting them, you know, and his memory from his childhood and stuff like that. And and you kind of feel... You, you know, he's, he's like right on the string. He's right on the edge of killing again, you know, and it's really, it's really kind of screwed up. He shouldn't even call back in because it, it's, he just happened to stumble upon this radio talk show, uh, you know, and they, you know, the, the subject that he's actually world famous for, you know, <laughs> whether you like that or not, that's basically, you know, he just is uh, talk radio, basically, that's what it is. And so I'm not sure what year this was made in though. Uh, I think I know the other ones were made in the eighties or maybe uh, Psycho Two, Psycho Three, nineties or something like that. This I'm not sure how much longer after three this one actually came out. Psycho Four. I'm gonna do some uh, digging on this though because it, it it I found this movie much better than most people actually give it credit for. I thought the movie had a lot of great flashbacks, had great bad memories, had a uh, interesting uh, topic. Uh, the, all, all the actors were pretty good in this movie, uh, especially CCH Pounder, the radio talk show host. She actually, you know, kept him on the line and tried to convince him, to, you know, don't let any of this, you know, screw you up again. Do not kill, you know. And he's talking about killing his wife again, his new wife. And, oh, my God, it's terrible, man. You know, and... They're actually, I don't, they're not living in the house. They're not living in the house, Anthony Perkins and his new wife. They're living in the suburbs or something like that. So, you know, towards the end, Anthony Perkins tells, calls his wife and he says, uh, meet me at the old house, the base motel. And she goes, why? You know, I just, you, you know, he's, he's all schizo. He says, just meet me there. They meet me there. You know, he's, he's just basically, you know, going off the deep end again, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, and I'm not going to give the ending away. Of course, it all turns out good at the end, you know. So you don't have to worry about him killing again. He he comes to his senses at the end, and he spares uh, his last victim, you know. And he ends up burning the house down, at least partially, you know, because he wants to destroy all the all the bad memories of that house. So he basically torches the inside of the house. And, of course, he's, been, he's, uh, he's hallucinating that all these bodies are coming out of the walls and his mother is talking to him and stuff and we in rocking chairs as he's, you know, pouring kerosene all over the house and lighting it on fire with his lighter, you know. And <laughs> so he's basically trying to do something here, you know. He finally come to his senses here, and he's, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to, you know, rebuild the house. I suppose somebody will because it's like an old mansion. It's kind of a beautiful old house. I would actually kind of like to live there. You know, but, uh, so anyway, we'll get back, we'll forget, that's kind of like the ending. It, it, so it's a, got a nice ending to it, you know, he, you know, his wife's fine, he's fine, and, you know, and of course they're going to have a baby too, so he's worried that his baby, uh, their baby is going to turn out like him, so that's what he, he wanted to kind of off his wife, because he didn't want to bring another bad seed into the world, and, uh, you know, so that's kind of him and her, him and her, uh, Get my words out here. <laughs> that that's the idea about him and her anyway. Anyway, back to the back to the interview and stuff like that. Now, what I do like about this movie, it's it, it's it's really dark and atmospheric and creepy, and it seems to have a lot of nice dialogue, you know, between Anthony, Norman Bates, and the radio people, and you know, a lot of good flashbacks with good actors and actresses, 
And that's what I kind of like about this, too. Uh, they seem, whoever did this movie, I think, did it actually a pretty good job. And like I said before, it should get more credit than what it does, you know, than what it uh, has been uh, given in the past. I think this movie actually, I was actually pleasantly surprised by this movie. You know, I'd heard so many bad things about this movie that it was just a waste of time. They, you know, they should have never done it, uh, things like that. But, you know, I think I think it worked out pretty well. It's not a perfect movie. It's not as good as like uh, one, two, or three, but it, it does kind of tell you where everything began when he was just a young kid and a teenager, before he had to finally, uh, you know, take matters into his own hands because his brain was completely uh, schizoid, you know. And uh, but no, I Anthony Perkins. It's you know. I don't know why he said, I, I remember reading something recently where he said he kind of disowned this movie. He was not happy with it, but I think it's actually a pretty good movie. You know, uh, it, you kind of get drawn into this movie a little bit. You know, I mean, it's, you get the flashbacks from the old stuff and the current stuff when he's, you know, happily married or supposedly happily married. And he, he's kind of... Eh, it, to me, it's, an, like I said about eight times before, it's a very well, it's a very good idea for a movie, you know, and I, I'm sure this is the end of it now because I know they didn't make a Psycho 5, so, except for the Bates Motel, that, that cable TV show and stuff like that, and other little spinoffs and crap like that, you know, and, but this is the real deal, you know, these movies are the real deal, and, you know, I'm not going to sit and argue with anybody about these movies, I, I should be talking about number three, too, because that's actually not a bad sequel to number two, and I, I do believe that number four is actually a pretty good beginning, as the title suggests. A new the beginning. Uh, what could I give this a, as a rating? You know, I'm not going to give it an eight or a nine, but I think I'd probably at least give this a six or a seven, just because I never knew it existed, like I said before, and I was pleasantly surprised. It, I watched the whole thing in one one straight run, you know, from start to finish one night, uh, maybe about four nights ago, and I actually, like I said before, I actually liked this movie. I kind of got drawn into the story, the his youth story, his past story, and his current story. It just seemed like the, whoever did this movie did a pretty good job. It could have been better, you know, all movies could be better, but I do believe that he, whoever made this movie, I should actually find out who made this movie, because I'm sitting there babbling about, you know, <laughs> babbling about who made this movie. Maybe it's the same people that made the second and third one, too. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, what else can I say about this movie? Let's let's give this movie, like, a, let's give it a seven. It's not a bad... Let's give it a seven, Spiderwebs, because I just think it deserves more recognition that, than it's gotten in the past. And, you know, I... Uh, of course, there's the purists out there who are going to, you know, barf or going to bark at my uh, my uh, rating and my review and everything like that. But I don't care. I'm telling you what, how I feel about the movie, you know. And I'm usually right about movies, you know. I'll tell you either it's got some good special effects, it's got a decent story, it's got a good script, it's got, like, uh, good photography, good acting, stuff like that. And I think this movie is actually well done, number four. You know, uh, it's it actually might be better than number three. You know, with Je oh, with Anthony Perkins and Jeff uh, Fahey or whatever his name is. They, well, we'll get to that movie review in the future. But I wanted to get to this movie tonight because I just wanted to kind of let everybody know how I felt about this movie. I've seen number three a bunch of times. And, of course, I have the triple feature, you know, so you all know I got these movies. Standard DVDs and everything. So I would recommend this, this, uh, this three-disc set. It's got, like, two, three, and four. It's a two-disc set, so you, don't, you only get one movie per side. Uh, one disc has uh, Cycle 2 in it, and the second disc has Cycle 3 and Cycle 4 on it. So you don't have to flip them over, because I don't like movies that are double-sided, where you, they can end up getting scratched and stuff. So you got the artwork on one side and the movies on the other side, which I really think is a much better idea. It preserves the quality of your uh, your DVDs for future, for the future use and stuff like that. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about scratches and stuff when you're always flipping them over and stuff like that to get to the B side of a movie or something like that. So this is actually a pretty good set. I would recommend this. I got this actually from Amazon uh, maybe about a month ago, three weeks ago or something like that. I don't know if you can see it very well. There it is, two, three, four, and there it is. I'd recommend you get this. It's pretty dirt cheap, you know, considering it's a triple feature. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you how I thought about number four, and uh, you know, you could all 
It's up to you. I'm sure a lot of you are going to complain about, well, it's, you know, Spidey, you're way off base here. No, I'm not way off base. I know my movies. <laughs> I know my movies, and I, I'm a little more fair than most movie reviewers. I'll basically give try to find something good about a movie to talk about. You know, I just won't completely a dog a movie too much unless it's a complete bomb. And I've come across a few of those in recent years, in recent months, but, you know, these movies are some of my favorites, so... I'm going to end this review tonight, and so I'm not sure who's going to be here next time, but all of you just be safe, and remember, I am the real Spider-Man, and I am watching you, and I'm watching your back, so we'll see you guys later, and hopefully we'll have another review for you pretty soon. Maybe some Elvira movies. <laughs> How about that? Oh, Mistress of the Dark. I'm watching that one right now. I, I love that movie. But anyway, we'll see you guys later, and take care.